Hey everyone, it's Andrew, and today I'm going to be turning this stack of walnut and maple into one of the most interesting lamps I've ever made. I love lamp. I got about 500 board feet of this walnut a while back on Marketplace, and it was from a metal worker whose grandfather was a woodworker. He wanted to get rid of it for $200 and said if I didn't take it, it would just end up as firewood anyway. So I happily took it off his hands, and what's even cooler than the insane deal is the type of history it carries. Since it's so old and unpredictable, there's a lot of spalting to avoid and voids to fill, but nothing a little Starbond can't fix. Based on how I designed this lamp, which is kind of by the seat of my pants, I only needed one straight edge to work with. Using that straight edge as a reference, I measured out the top and bottom portions so the legs will lie flat on the base. It'll be more clear when you see it come together. Once I had my top and bottom points marked out, I began sketching random curves between the two points and highlighted them with a marker to make them more visible. I cut directly on my mark lines at the miter saw which left me perfectly flat edges for the lamp legs to stand on. With these types of builds, it's more of a template style rather than accurate cutting. Since it's all just random, I loosely followed the line on the bandsaw and once I was happy with the shape, I cleaned it up at the spindle sander. I ripped the board down the middle and stacked the curved edge on top of the new edge with double sided tape. This allowed my first edge to act as a template which I could cut out roughly and then flush trim it on the router table. It's a bit unorthodox but it worked and I didn't have to waste any material or time on a separate template. After it was cut I used this marking gauge to sketch out the backside line while I kept both pieces taped together. This allowed me to cut and shape both at the same time on the bandsaw and at the spindle stander. I did a little bit of final cleanup with the hand sander and then moved on to joinery. Router tables can be sketchy, so I decided to take this super risky cut to start on the tenons for the legs. I probably should have done it all by hand, but the router table is just so clean if you go slow. Surprisingly, it worked out great and due to the curvature of the legs, I had to finish the edges of the tenon by hand. The router cuts left reliable lines to mark against and cut up to. This made the rest of the tenon come together easily. Hand tool work isn't my strong suit, but it's always so satisfying marking out cut lines and watching chisels peel back thin layers of wood like skin. The tenons were finally cut, so I moved on to creating the base out of this figured maple. First order business was to trim the edges and make it a pretty little rectangle. I marked out where I wanted the mortises to be, hogged out the center of them with a router, and then peeled some more wood skin back with a couple chisels. And I'm going to admit, I'm pretty proud of how nice this fit came together. The joinery felt natural, a whole spiritual connection without lube or wax. It just jammed into the mortise hole and it held it in place like I wasn't even going to need glue later. I left the legs in the base and tried to mark out the weird angles to shape this cross piece. It ended up not working well so I just cut corresponding angles on all pieces and pre-drilled holes to run the cable through. Based on the grain direction, the glue up was easy and it was all edge joints so I didn't need any reinforcing. It even held up to the drum sander 30 minutes after glue up. The top shape was obviously not ideal so I marked out some lines and got back to some hand tool work. I didn't really know the type of look I was going for but I swear it has nothing to do with any sort of genitalia. I promise it's definitely not what it definitely looks like. I circumcised the top with a handsaw and shaped the tip with my favorite Shinto rasp. Nothing makes me feel like a woodworker more than hand shaping things with the rasp and hand planes. It definitely adds a personal touch to the piece and allows for a little bit of perfect imperfections. After it was where it needed to be, I just smoothed it out with some 120 grit sandpaper. Hopping back to the base, it wasn't making the lamp tall enough so I wanted to create some sort of curved feet. I had this piece of mahogany left over from my guitar build video and it was already at the dimensions I needed. I obtained the interior curve by cove cutting on the table saw, taking small passes until I couldn't anymore. The back side of the feet got a heavy curve from this oddly shaped table edge round over bit. Once shaped, I marked out the edges to cut the feet to length, although it wasn't too important due to the next unnecessary steps I had in mind. I glued the feet directly to the base and cleaned up as much squeeze out as possible. I like using random household objects to create unique edge profiles, so I used this iron and it provided a much more gradual unique shape. Per usual, I cut the waist out on the bandsaw and used a scrap piece of melamine to keep it from tipping over the edge. I took some time to smooth out the blade marks and added a hefty round over to the top. This was the final look and it still seemed a little boring to me. After some serious consideration, I just started hacking away at the edges with hand planes and wraps until it was more round. 
The goal was to smooth the transition from the top to the legs, allowing it to be a little bit more bulbous. The base was finally where I wanted it, so I moved on to routing a quarter inch channel into the backside of one of the legs. Due to the curves, I had a couple blowout spots, but no one will know they were there besides me or anyone who was watching this. To allow the cable to fit through the base and the tenon, I drilled 3 8 inch holes through each so the wire could stay hidden. I thought all this would finally need is a nice round over to the edges, but the more I looked at it, I felt I wanted to induce more labor on myself. So I just started drawing a weird pattern on the front with a pencil, then highlight it with a pen. I knew I wanted to carve it, but I wasn't sure what I was really going for. My thoughts were river rocks or some sort of pattern that looked natural, and that's it. I got out my Dremel and installed the spherical carbide bit to do the line work. With zero plans or experience in carving, I just started hacking away at this thing and there was no turning back. The spherical bit did well for line work, but the edges needed to be smoother, so I chucked in a cone-shaped bit and, again, started hacking away. When I first thought of this idea, I thought it would be simple, quick, and easy to burn through, but I was sadly mistaken as I ended up having the hand sand every last crevice, inch by inch. This entire process stripped my fingers of skin, left me in pain, and feeling some type of way about this project in general. I hate everything. I finally got it done after two days of shaping and sanding so I could finally run the wire and do final glue ups. Finally. I milled up some scrap left over from the lamp legs to a quarter inch thick and trimmed a thin piece off of it. The thinner it is, the easier it would bend around the curves in the channel. I used Type Bond Extend White Glue because it dries clear and blends with sawdust a lot better. After that, I just hammered it into place inch by inch until it was all the way filled. Once dried, I grabbed a block plane and shaved it down until it was flush with the top. And just like that, I had a bunch of walnut ribbons and a hidden lamp wire. While I'm at it, I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to those that have made it this far in the video. If you feel like this type of content brings you any value or entertainment, I'd really appreciate your support by subscribing to my channel. I plan on continuing this YouTube thing and hope to bring better quality builds and videos as we go along through this journey. So again, thank you. After it was all set up, I got a chance to step back and look at it. It kind of reminded me of a giraffe or a pile of turds. If you agree or see something different, let me know in the comments because I'm honestly torn. I usually use Rubio, but since everyone started hating Odie's oil, I use that instead for this. It actually smells fantastic and I'll probably use it again. Application was a pain in the ass due to all the crevices in the legs and my poor little fingies started getting cramps. Although, it was all worth it to see the walnut pop in the end. Now, I'm not an electrician, but I've built a lot of lamps, and all you really need to know is how to connect the wires to the receptacle thingy. Lamp wires come in two portions, a hot wire and a ground wire. The ground wire generally has a prominent rib running down the side, and the hot wire is smooth. Depending on your hardware, the hot wire attaches to the screw closest to the on-off mechanism, or is generally copper colored. Another thing to mention is to always keep the wires long on top so you can trim back to size. It's nearly impossible to add more length afterwards. Once everything was wired up, I threw in the cool looking bulb and it worked. If you like builds like these, make sure to check out the rest of my channel. If you want more woodworking content, check out The Wooden Hobbyist on Instagram, Facebook, and Reddit. I've also queued up a few more build videos if you feel so inclined. Thanks for watching and happy building.